Well, g'day everyone. Welcome to another CMI podcast. Uh, my name is Dr. Jonathan Safady, head scientist of Creation Ministries International uh, USA branch now. Uh, and this time we're going to talk about ape men, the myth that humans evolved from ape like creatures. And with me is Joel Tay from Creation Ministries. I'm one of the speakers and writers for the ministry as well. So, uh, what's the usual thing we, we need to talk about here? Because, I mean, uh, I, we, of course, don't believe humans evolved at all, uh, but we hear about loads and loads of supposed ape men. Supposedly, there's nice long progression of things becoming more and more human-like and usually more and more white when they do so. John, this is a huge topic and it will take us hours just to cover the main candidates. So we are just going to do a short 15 minutes overview just to give people a framework so they know how to understand this whole thing about ape man, you know, did we come from apes and things like that. So I think one of the things we need to understand is that um, paleontologists, when they classify human bones, they classify, there's two main groups. We have what we call the lumpers and what's the splitters. So do you want to share what's lumper and splitters? Well, it's about, see, splitters want to give new names for everything because you get your name published if you find something new. So there's an incentive to, to make a, a new name even if it's actually the same kind as something previously discovered, while the lumpers will try to say, well, these things really are part of the same kind, so maybe we should not call them a different name, maybe we should call them all the same name. And I think creationists tend to be lumpers because we think we point out the kind is much larger than the so-called species, probably as large as the family in many instances. Yes, so if they can interbreed, we say they are the same kind, so we lump those together. So in, in fact, now from genetics, we know that Neanderthals and Dinosaurians that they, they interbreed together, so they're the same kind. Neanderthals and human, we interbreed together. So we know that we are all the same kind. We do not have like multiple kinds of humans. We have the human kind and we have another kind, which is an ape-like kind. And um, they call that the Australopithecines, right? Well, see, also epithecines, I think it seems that all the different uh, human, so-called human ancestors are going to be grouped either as Australopithecine kind or as human kind. And the Australopithecine is actually further away from both humans and apes than apes are from each other. That was something by Charles Oxnard a long time ago by looking at lots of different features of all these categories um, called multivariate analysis. And he found that Australopithecines are a distinct kind, distinct from both apes and humans, and not at all in, in between the two. Yeah, and I think there's actually, we can say even a third kind, this kind, what we call a basket taxon. So a basket taxon is just a collection of bones that have individuals of humans, and, and these Australopithecines all mix up together, eat bones together. So like you say, um, you have the human kind, the Australopithe uh, Australopithecines, and you have the basket, which is just a mix of bones. Let, let's look at, at the Australopithecines, or the ape-like so-called ancestors of humans, that's what evolutionists will say. So what are some of the more popular candidates? Well, the thing is, I mean, when I was at school, we even thought of, uh, they told me that Ramapithecus was a human ancestor, and yet now no one believes that. They believe it's an orangutan ancestor. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have things like Australopithecus africanus, Mm -hmm. Again, now they believe that's on a side branch, Australopithecus robustus or Paranthropus robustus. Again, it's a nutcracker man or Zinjanthropus boy, say. <laughs> uh, when our mentor Carl Whelan was a, a young man, that was a missing link. No one believes that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, you've got Lucy, which is Australopithecus afarensis, and you've got um, things which are sometimes called Ardipithecus. Yes. So a lot of different things, but I think they're all the same Australopithecine kind. Yes, that's right. Um, interesting you mentioned Lucy. I mean, this Australopithecus afarensis. So I did my science degree in evolution. And when I was in school, mm. um, Lucy was considered um, one of humans' ancestors in, in our line that leads to men. But now, you know, even paleontologists will say that Lucy is just a side chain. It's unrelated. Evolution to say it's unrelated to our ancestry line as well. It happens so, all the time. Everything is, oh, so here's the human ancestor. But oh, oh whoops, it was actually a side branch of the, of the human ancestry line. Yeah, mm. people's, people, they ever, uh, people, when they hear about ape men, they think, oh, it's so established. They do not have any idea how often it has changed. In fact, what I studied in college, um, just a few years ago, I went to do an online course with uh, Dr. Donald Johansson. And wow. um, that is, uh, he's the founder of Lucy. And the reason I did that course is because I wanted to see what was the current belief in evolution because everything that I was taught that, uh, that they assumed was a human ancestor in the past is now gone out the window and a whole new set of individuals have taken their place. 
So it just tells you that um, if they have to change that all the time, they never had the right answer to begin with. Which means all the dogmatism they told us, all oh, here's, here's this, all this wonderful proof of human evolution and it's all gone out the window. The things that you learned five years ago is out, out the window with the evolutionists themselves. The only thing that doesn't change is their dogma that humans evolved from ape-like creatures. That's the thing that they, they are clinging to dogmatically, but um, the evidence always keeps on changing. With Lucy, and that's the, that's the big one, right? Lucy, they claim that this was one of our ancestors. That was at least what most people were taught when they were in school. So with Lucy, um, they found a footprint, right? The Latoli footprints. Mm, um, yes. Do you want to elaborate on Latoli footprints? Well, the thing is, they're very human. They look like human footprints, like modern human footprints. But of course, they're dated so early that the only the only eight uh, only creature supposed to have lived that long ago was Lucy. So here, well, here we go. Lucy had human footprints, but in fact, um, it doesn't actually match the skeletal features of Lucy. Uh, it's only because of their dating method that they have to assume that Lucy made these human-like footprints. I think humans made those human-like footprints. That's right, because the footprints were actually identical to humans. And if you actually look at the picture of, of a chim and a human, you see that ape-like footprints or their handprints, they're, they're completely different from humans. So what happens is that they found these this footprints, uh, they date that to be 3.75 million years old. And that's older than Lucy. So how can Lucy be our ancestor if the footprints they are identical to humans were dated older than that? And this was like a thousand miles away. So what they had to do is they had to change the story and say that, oh, Lucy Kine must have made that footprints. Mm -hmm. You see, because you can't have humans older than their so-called ancestors. But what's interesting now- It happens now, all the time, yeah. Happens like all the birds time. and dinosaurs too, same sort of thing. These birds are older than their dinosaur ancestors. Interesting. In Greece, they actually found um, human footprints, identical to human footprints that date to 5.7 million years old, older than all the so-called ancestors of human beings. That just messes up the evolutionary timeline. So we, with the apes, um, we have some features that when we look at them, we know this is one of the Australopithecine-like creatures. So they have a sloping face. They have like the, the brains, um, they're smaller, but not just smaller. The whole architecture, the way the brain is shaped mm. is different as well. The Australopithecines have a very different facial structure. They also mm. have different jaws. I mean, we have a U-shaped jaw. You see the u shape. And you've got pictures of that. And the uh, apes and Australopithecines have more of a V-shaped jaw, a bit sharper than we do. It's a very different jaw structure. Yeah, the jaw, the hands as well is different. You look at a, at a chimp, you know, the hands is very different from human beings. They have like a very short thumb compared to humans. You can actually mm -hmm. see the picture that we included here. You look at the feet, you know how um, an ape's feet look like. It kind of looks a little bit like a hand, right? Yeah, I think also you've got the, the curved phalanger, the finger bones yes. are a bit curved because they're meant to be grasping with their feet as well as their hands. Yeah. And Lucy has these curved toe bones as well. We have straight bones in the toe, but they have curved bone because they're arboreal creatures, arboreal, probably knuckle walkers. They've got the knuckle walking thing. Their knuckle becomes fixed when they walk on the ground like gorillas do today. We don't have that. Yeah, the year balance also tells us that they're not bipedal. They're tree arboreal creatures. In fact, Lucy, mm. we actually only have 20% of their bones. So, you know, it's... Oh my goodness. And, and we know that at least one of their bones is actually from a baboon. So, oh my goodness, okay. Some paleontologists, when they look at that and they say that not just that bone, but it could be that there are actually other real human bones that have been mixed together with Lucy. At least from the waist up, it looks completely like an Australopithecine or an ape-like creature. So we have covered Lucy. Um, what about the human, the human group? The humankind. Mm. So we have, um, do you, you want to name some of them? Well, I mean, we have, I think even Homo erectus was human. It was part of our, our created kind. Mm -hmm. Neanderthals are definitely part of our created kind. The Denisovans, again, they're, they're, they're human created kinds. This is what we said before. Um, things are either Australopithecine or they're human. They're not a mixture. So how do you know that they're humans? Well, because they have human features, but also in many cases because they interbreed with, with clearly modern-looking Homo sapiens. In Neanderthal, they're a Neanderthal uh, modern hybrid. So clearly the modern-looking human Homo sapiens and Neanderthal Homo sapiens were interbreeding. Yeah. So, so why then do they classify Neanderthals and Erectus as a different group? Do they have any unique features that you know, differentiate them from modern humans? It seems to be only a morphological thing, which means uh, their shape. But I mean, when it comes to uh, culture, I mean, we actually have evidence that Neanderthals 
uh, could play musical instruments. They made what they called high tech super glue. They may have they had a mm -hmm. cosmetic industry. So they had all this know how, and it's they quite clearly could speak as well. So they had language. In fact, everything that we have about human culture, burying the dead was another thing. They clearly buried their dead. So they were not ape-like creatures. Animals don't do these uh, elaborate burials that the humans do. So, so many things about the Neanderthals, they were not brutish ape-like creatures. They're as human as you and me. Yeah, they, they make fig uh, figurines, like, like you say, jewelry, cosmetics. And just a few years ago, some scientists found that for them to actually get to certain islands, they have to sail for like huge distances across the sea against the current. And the only way you can do that is if you are sailing with a group, a huge group of people, you have seaworthy craft and you must have navigation skills to get there. The Homo erectus must have been seafarers. Yeah, that's right. So there's no way we can say that, that these are not um, humans, you know, in every way they're humans. And so they have very small features, I think, that make them slightly different. For example, um, uh, Homo erectus is human, but it has a slightly smaller um, brain capacity compared to most humans. Neanderthals have a slightly larger brain capacity. They don't, both of mm. them don't really have much of a gene, but these are very minor differences. In fact, even the brain capacity is, is within, I mean, the human range as well. That's something we wrote a while ago, the Homo erectus brain capacity was, was in the range of human capacity. And uh, if Neanderthals actually have bigger brains on average, they can't be an intermediate between apes and humans because you expect to have a smaller brain, but they've got a bigger brain. So... <laughs> Yes, that's right. Yeah. In fact, you know how um, evolution is used to portray um, Neanderthals as some brutish ape-like creatures. But if you look at the pictures here, they actually show that the modern reconstructions look very much like, like modern human beings. You, you can't really tell just by looking at them. So if they're dressed in a suit, they walk on the street, you know, I, I wouldn't recognize them at first glance. They would look like just us, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And what's interesting... Um, why, why do Neanderthals and Erectus, why do they have slightly different features from most of us? Uh, I think with Neanderthals, they seem to be cold-adapted humans. I can't tell about Erectus, but Neanderthals lived in cold climates, and they seem to have features that would adapt them to cold climates. And adaptation, by the way, is part of the biblical creation model. It's not an evolutionary, something unique to evolution. It's part of the biblical model. And, and Neanderthals suggest um, cold adaptation. Mm -hmm. And I think in the last few years, we actually, we actually have Neanderthal genetics. And um, when we look at these early humans, we find that they have a lot of deformities, bone developmental mm. deformities. Um, they have, their DNA tells us that um, they actually have been inbreeding among themselves for a long time. So this could be reasons why there are certain features that are, um, how should I say that, um, more prominent because they're always inbreeding within the same line. So, this would be explainable if, if they come from uh, the ba post Babel population, where you have small, isolated populations coming out of Babel after God confused the languages. Mm -hmm. Some of them would be quite small for a long time, and it's a prolonged bottleneck that produces the fixation of distinct characters like we see in these creatures. I think it might be a case of long um, bottleneck, small populations, uh, which are isolated from the mainstream humans. Mm -hmm. That would explain a lot, I think. So they're just we can just understand them as an isolated people group, in, in other words. So we, there's another, another group that we did not really touch much, and we say it's a basket taxon where we have bones of humans and apes together. And uh, we don't really have much time to talk about that, but individuals in, in, in this category will be like Homo habilis or Australopithecus sediba. And we know mm -hmm. that these are not individuals because we have this collection of bones, in one set, you have, for example, a hand bone that is clearly from an ape and a hand bone, the same bone, one corresponding creature in the same species that is clearly from a human. And you can't mm. have the same bone being both ape and human. You know, it has to be either one or the other. So. Right. So it's a multiple thing. And it's also waste basket. The idea, well, we don't know what it is. So we don't call this Homo habilis. We don't know what it is. Let's throw it in that waste basket taxon, that sort of thing. Yes, that's right. And, you know, one thing that makes us unique as humans um, is our ability to think and to use languages. Do you want to elaborate about languages? And, yeah, how does that compare to an ape? Well, I mean, see, apes, I mean, they talk about teaching apes language, but in fact, it's not really language. It's a sort of a recognition of certain items of uh, of food, for instance, but there's nothing like what we have in language, which, for instance, um, recursion, which is a thought within a thought. I mean, if I told... Um, Joel uh, to give Gary uh, that book. You see, the concept of giving Gary that book is within the concept of me telling Joel something. You see, humans 
children can understand what I meant there, uh, but an ape would be totally confused by very simple human um, language and grammar that we have. Uh, all humans can learn any language as a child, including sign language. Uh, apes cannot learn do that. Yeah, and yet we hear in the news all the time that no humans and chimps were ninety nine percent similar, right? So where where did we oh, where goodness. did we even get that figure from? And you know, is that accurate? What what do you think? Oh, it, 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 even informed evolutionists have abandoned that one a long time ago. In fact, you have people like Sibley and Alkvist. They were the ones who thought about 98% similarity by using a fairly crude event. But Alkvist since became a creationist um, quite a few years before he died recently. So you got the, 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 the instigator of this, this argument became a young Earth creationist. And now we know uh, that it's, it's at most 95% similarity. And to put this into perspective, um, there are 3,000 letters of DNA Mm-hmm. In a human, so one percent is thirty million. So thirty million differences to arise in only the five million years since apes and humans are supposed to have split off. Yeah, it's not possible. And, uh, and now it's one hundred and fifty million letters have got to try because now uh, at five <laughs> ninety five percent at the most, possibly as little as eighty five percent. Yes, and the yes. Uh, and the the um, Y chromosome is extremely different. It's it's, it's uh, what would expect if we evolve from chickens? You see, that, that's how different the uh, Y chromosome is from the uh, ape Y chromosome that men have. Yeah. So interestingly, you know, when I was doing my degree in evolution, um, evolutionists were like, oh, this is you know, rock solid and this. But if you look at this picture that we have here, okay, this picture was actually in, in Nature, Nature Journal in 2014 by uh, Bernard Woods. And Bernard Woods is one a very famous um, evolutionary paleontologist. And this is the so-called human evolutionary tree that you see here. And if you notice on the top right-hand side, you have those that are colored blue. Those are what we say are the humans. And the others, those are the other Australopithecines. But notice something. This so-called evolutionary tree, many of these branches are floating in mid-air. They're not even connected. Hmm. These evolutionists themselves today are less sure about our origins than they were 20, 30 years ago. In fact, I, I'll read this quotation. It says this by Bernard Wood again. He says, even with all the fossil evidence and analytical techniques from the past 50 years, a convincing hypothesis for the origin of Homo, them humans, remains elusive. So far from the idea that you know, human evolution is rock solid, it's actually the other way around. Everything is collapsing and biblical creation makes a much better sense of what we see in the evidence. In fact, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, um, this discussion with um, Jono and me. And if you're interested to read more, I would highly recommend this book. Contested Bones is one of the most comprehensive and up-to-date resource on this, um, on this topic of ape, man, and bones and things like that. And um, check out the links that we have at the bottom and um, the, the articles. Thank you. Thank you.